Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday. Over here in the Atlantic, we have one storm. Hurricane Philippe became a Category 1 yesterday, was able to get about that far, formed about half an eye wall, which briefly showed up on visible imagery, and he's now getting sheared, likely no longer a hurricane. I didn't even look at the NHC 11 a.m. advisory, but it's probably not a hurricane anymore based on the low-level center becoming exposed, and he's now racing off to the northeast and being sheared, no threat to land. Land, one of the longest lived storms of this season, which has been interesting, big loopy track out here in the eastern Atlantic, but is now moving out to sea, the kind of storm we like, a very nice one to track, but no threat to anyone. And now we turn our attention southwest and look what's going on in this area of the world down here. Ooh, thunderstorms are now suddenly appearing in this area, and yesterday this area was void of anything going on. So why is it suddenly flaring up today? Well, if we go over to the water vapor imagery, it's like I said yesterday, we needed a catalyst. This area of the world's very dry. We need a catalyst to start sparking activity in this area, and the catalyst is this upper level trough over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. You can kind of see how the upper level flow curves in here. There's an upper level trough digging in in here and amplifying, and this is providing upper level divergence over this area to the east of the trough axis, which means air is spreading out aloft and allowing air to replace it from the surface, which means it has to rise and develop these thunderstorms. So now we have all this activity going off to the east of this trough axis. Now right now there's nothing organized, nothing really going on at the surface. We have this old funnel boundary in here which has been dormant, but will eventually serve as the base for where low pressure tries to form somewhere in this area near Cuba and the Bahamas or the Florida Straits within the next few Few days and we're going to very slowly start winding this area up. Now it's going to be a while before this actually starts to show true colors but we are going to have rainfall being generated over this area for quite a while and the big question with this is not whether we're going to get rainfall in Florida because we're definitely going to get rainfall in Florida but exactly where the low pressure tries to focus and consolidate when it develops so we can talk about its exact track. Now if the upper level trough stays right here over the eastern gulf then we have all the way back here towards the center of the low and just east of it towards southwest Florida as a possibility for where it develops. But this trough should shift slightly eastward as the days go by. The reason being that we have a couple of storms out here in the eastern Pacific, which I will show you. I believe they're called Hova and Irvin. I think I got that right. These eastern Pacific storms big, big, big area of upward motion here, two storms in close proximity, massive area of heat. You can see outflow racing out from their northern sides to the northeast here as these storms, they're moving northeastward here. I could actually bring some moisture towards Texas eventually, especially Hova. This one will probably be fizzling as it moves almost directly eastward eventually, but Hova could bring some moisture to Texas eventually. But the main point here regarding our subtropical system is that this will be throwing a jet stream across Mexico into the Gulf of Mexico and when these winds get in here with this ridging building in, it'll force this upper level trough a little bit farther east either directly over Florida or just east of Florida and allow low pressure to consolidate more to the east of the state is where I believe it's going to be right now. And this is going to be providing a lot of rainfall. There's a strong easterly fetch coming to Florida. You can see the strong easterly winds coming in right now due to high pressure off to the north. And this is providing windy conditions and is going to focus a lot of rainfall over especially the central and northern parts of the state. And if we go to the HPC precipitation forecast for the next five days, we have over 10 inches of rain showing up for eastern Florida over here, encompassing the entire state. Remains to be seen whether the entire state will get all of this heavy rain or whether only the northern and central parts will if the storm tries to develop and move north quickly, but we are going to see a lot of heavy rain here, not just Florida, possibly up into Georgia and South Carolina and North Carolina as well if a low develops and moves north like this right up the coast. Now here's the European from last night, day five, and it has low pressure over the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and it's been hanging on this for a long time now, but notice there is an extension in the low pressure region off to the northeast. It is seeing vorticity out over here. This is where the storm wants to be. This is where low pressure wants to develop. And if we go to day six, look what happens. It phases right up into North Carolina, just like that. 
And that's exactly what wants to happen and it's what should happen. Even if we get a weak low that tries to move into the southeast gulf and gets stacked with the upper low, chances are we'll have a secondary develop here become dominant and then try to phase northward. And then if we go out to day seven, it actually tries to phase nicely with the eastern seaboard trough in here and it becomes an extratropical entity that really winds up in New England and uh, could be a interesting weather for them if this actually came about. This would have to wait long enough towards days six and seven to actually be able to face with this trough. The GFS brings this into Georgia and Florida within four days which is a little too fast for it to pull this off in New England and then of course it's inland so it wouldn't be as strong but overall I think the idea that this would this will be east of Florida and then near Florida or Georgia and South Carolina as it moves northward is going to be the idea that prevails here. Even if we get weak low pressure in here first, I think this becomes dominant and moves north. So we'll have to see how that progresses because again, we don't have an actual system to, wa to watch yet. As soon as we see where this really starts forming, we'll get a much better handle on the fine details of where this is going to go. But overall, this is going to be a very blusty, blustery few days over here for this area of the world regardless of where the low pressure goes it's going to be very blustery but probably not going to be very dangerous of a situation we may get tropical storm conditions here and we may get a named subtropical system out of this but probably not going to be anything more than some very strong winds and heavy rain but nothing so strong that folks need to worry a whole lot about this just remember to stay safe in any case now, if we look at the European out to day seven, notice we have this big trough over the eastern seaboard. This is going to move on, and then we have ridging building back in, which means surface high pressure starts building back in behind this trough, and we start building the air mass over the eastern United States again, which means we start charging up the Caribbean with convergence yet again, and instead of subtropical entities this time, the MJO is coming back, so the tr subtropical jet minds its own business up here to the north, and we have a chance to get mischief going on down here again, and look what happens by day 10. We start charging up with low pressure in the northwestern Caribbean, just as we've been talking about. As soon as the subtropical entity is gone, we have chance for number two, and we could have a double whammy here as another storm of more true tropical nature may try to develop down here. And you can see that the MJO is finally on the move. Here's the observations here. You can see that it's now right here. The analysis time for, t for yesterday is now racing across the Pacific. And all the models unanimously bring it like this into phases 8 and 1. And this is going to bring upward motion to our area of the world. Now here's something very interesting to look at. This is the GFS 60 run looking at the Eastern Pacific here. The United States is up over here. Here is Hova and Irvin out here in the Eastern Pacific. Now check out the area of heavi heaviest precipitation. Where is it? You can see it's clearly where these storms are here. This is the monsoonal circulation. How do you know it's monsoonal? Because there's southwesterly winds coming into it north of the equator. So circle this area of heaviest precipitation. Watch this as we start running the loop here. These storms are moving eastward, which is very rare for the eastern Pacific, but notice that the area of heaviest precipitation starts shifting all the way east here, and the monsoon circulation jumps right over into the western Caribbean. And then guess what? We get a storm moving out of the Caribbean by the time we get to days 8 through 10 on the GFS. The entire monsoonal circulation starts off back here and then ends up shifting within the next 10 days all the way over here into the Caribbean. This is due to the aggressive move of the MJO coming eastward in a hurry right now over the Pacific and the classic mid-latitude pattern where we have a lot of troughing over the west and troughing getting trapped underneath near the Gulf of Mexico that starts dragging all this moisture over into the areas where it can start developing over the warm waters of the Caribbean and then get drawn north in the classic fashion towards Florida, Cuba, Eastern Gulf, and the Bahamas that I've been talking about and harping on for so long during the month of September that is likely to happen as this pattern evolves as soon as the MJO gets to our area of the world. And now that it's finally here, it's been so stubborn, but now that it's finally here, we need to watch this, and there is a chance that we get multiple storms out of this pattern. The subtropical entity that we may have to deal with in here is not the last of the systems we may see, and we may see something of more serious nature going on down here eventually once we charge up the eastern part of the country with high pressure again. So we may be dealing with blustery weather here this weekend and into next week through mid next week, but there may be even more things to worry about lurking down here another week or so after that. So we will have to watch this closely. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.